Hey guys, welcome back. I'm James Brown, attorney at James Brown Law and founder of Title Elite. Today's topic is homeowners association and condominium association violations and how the prudent agent deals with these. We've all been there before, right? You're closing in a couple of days, uh, an estoppel letter went out early in the transaction, hopefully, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but then the day before closing, a revised estoppel letter gets tendered to oh, the buyers, the sellers, and the agents, and sure, lo and behold, there is a violation of some condominium or homeowners association covenant, and maybe there's a fine, maybe there's not a fine, and everybody's scrambling to assign blame. Unfortunately, like a lot of topics we talk about, there aren't great line, great bright line rules or tests or things we can remember to gauge these things by. So I want to give you a little analysis that you can work on. So in our particular situation, this came up the other day, uh, the homeowners association had an ongoing violation for a homeowner who had painted their door an incorrect color. There was a ongoing fine of $1,000 and the stop letter went out three or four weeks before closing, no violations, no fines, they made an error, then the day before closing and a violation letter went out with a thousand dollar fine. There's two issues we need to explore. Who's going to pay the fine and does the door have to be fixed and if so, who's going to fix it? So paying the fine is easy, right? There's an estoppel letter that assigns the fee to the seller. We all agree that the seller has to pay at closing. The hard issue is who has the duty to fix the door? The following analysis discusses who has the duty to fix and repaint the door and cure the violation. And whenever we talk about a relationship between two parties, the first go-to is always the contract. Here we're looking at the Florida Fire Bar 2017 version and the first paragraph that talks about violations um, of a homeowners association or a condominium association could be paragraph 10J, the seller's disclosures. Um, the seller dis required disclosures don't necessarily fall into the category that that door violation doesn't necessarily have to fall into the category of stuff that has to be disclosed. Why? The first, in the first portion of the paragraph, uh, you could read into it that the door violation could be easily uncovered, so it doesn't have to be disclosed. You have to remember the rule of Johnson v. Davis. Is it readily apparent? Does it materially affect value? And does the seller have knowledge? Well, it's readily apparent in the fact that if you made the brief inquiry to the association, the association would tell you there's a violation. So it is what I would consider readily apparent. The second part of that paragraph 10J talks about necessary disclosures if there's a violation of a governmental agency or entity. And since an HOA or a COA is not a governmental entity, uh, that disclosure of the violation is not necessary under that paragraph. The second paragraph where these kind of pet topics could come up would be 18A, the title standards. This provision requires a seller to deliver marketable title to buyer. I researched the title and underwriting laws and rules on this topic and I actually talked to several attorney friends about this. So the answers fall into three categories. The vast majority of attorneys felt an HOA or a COA violation with no fine was not a marketable title defect. The likely outcome would be the seller does not have to fix the door um, and the buyer has to close. Several attorneys felt that a violation with a currently running fine but no lien could be a marketable title defect. The likely outcome would be the seller may have to fix the door and um, buyer may not have to close if the seller doesn't. Why? Because litigation would likely result when the lien gets filed. So the third case was you have an ongoing fine and a recorded lien and everybody would agree that's a title issue, that's something the seller has to remedy and pay for. Uh, the FAR Bar Condominium and Homeowners Association riders are not much help here. Both riders, paragraph 3B of the condo rider, and paragraph 2A of the homeowners association riders say that the seller has to pay for the fines but it doesn't say that the seller has to make the repairs which is interesting 
If the seller gives a signed seller's disclosure, again, Johnson v. Davis, the rules in Johnson v. Davis should come to mind. Um, does the seller have knowledge? Yes. Is it readily apparent? Uh, if it, with a brief inquiry of the association, yes it is. And does it materially affect value? Yes, it could be. But here, the seller's disclosure does not require that the seller make the repairs. So I have some parting thoughts on the topic. Unfortunately, like most other problems we talk about, there are no great bright line tests or rules here. The best course of conduct for the prudent agent is to identify the issue early. The violation is usually identified in the estoppel letter, but that can be right up near the end of closing. Better time to discover this is in the inspection period. Transparently disclose the violation to buyer and seller and see if it can be worked out as an inspection period demand or closing cost credit to the buyer. Again, bring the agents in the loop. Everybody should be copied on that communication. Um, sellers agents can also speak as their sellers at listing appointments if there are any uh, homeowner association or condominium association violations. Again, we're not talking about permitting issues or municipal violations. These are strictly homeowner association and condo association violations. Some associations will not approve a buyer if there is a violation. If this is the case, that's a really good situation to force the seller to make the repairs promptly. And we have even seen some associations allow sellers to escrow money so that the repairs can be made post-closing to get the buyer approved. I have some sample language that we put in paragraph 20 when we're representing buyers. I'll provide that to you in a link for the outline, but it simply says, seller shall close all open and expired permits, permit all unpermitted improvements, and resolve and close all municipal, county, homeowners, and or condominium association violations, if applicable, in parentheses, prior to closing at seller's expense. Again, if you're representing buyers, that's useful language. Thanks for tuning in for another week of Title Talk. Stay tuned, hit like and subscribe, and I really enjoy empowering agents with the tools to succeed.